Hello, my name is Dr. Roderick L. Rowe, and today I will be talking to you about antimicrobial methods that control microorganisms. Specifically, how do they control microorganisms by using nucleic acids? So nucleic acid synthesis is needed for the organism to replicate. So we're going to talk about several categories of drugs that would inhibit DNA synthesis or RNA synthesis. So we'll first look at DNA replication. In general biology, you should have learned about DNA and how it replicates the different enzymes that are, in, that are involved, such as helicase, topoisomerase, and so on. DNA replication in prokaryotes and eukaryotes are very similar. Therefore, drugs like atenomycin can bind to DNA and it can block the synthesis in both cell types, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So if you take atenomycin, it will affect eukaryotic cells just like it affects prokaryotic cells. Synthetic analog drugs like quinolones and fluoroquinolones specifically target the bacteria gyrase. Remember when DNA is replicating as helicase moves from left to right in this image a supercoil will be created. Topoisomerase will alleviate that supercoil. So these two synthetic drugs, quinolones and fluoroquinolones, both target that topoisomerase. And if it inhibits topoisomerase, then the supercoil will occur. Then DNA replication will no longer happen. Example of fluoroquinolones is this drug. Some quinolone drugs can cause positive opiate results when using certain brands of these immunoassays called ELISA kits. A nucleotide analog drug is another example of a category of drugs. These nucleotide analogs are taken up by the pathogen and it will distort the three-dimensional shape of the DNA. If the DNA is distorted, then the enzymes such as helicase, topoisomerase, RNA polymerase, these primases, all of these enzymes are not going to be able to move because you distorted the shape of the DNA. So as you can see, the two categories we've talked about so far are in reference to inhibiting DNA replication in bacteria. Now let's take a look at some viruses. To understand viruses, uh, you have to understand that there's two major categories based on the type of nucleic acids they have. You have DNA viruses and you have RNA viruses. These viruses are able to replicate and survive in two separate pathways, the lytic pathway versus the lysogenic pathway. We'll discuss this later. Now that I've given you a little background of these viruses, I want you to now understand that these analogs are going to cause the virus to not be able to replicate. So the analog is a nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor. Uh, 
NRTI, and they're going to cause chain termination after it incorporates the analog into the viral DNA. So in the picture, I have a square around several drugs that belong to the category of nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. These drugs are going to target viruses especially because the virus is not a cell. A virus is an entity that in order to replicate it has to take up nucleotides. But these drugs are analogs of the nucleotides. So let's look at one of these analogs. This one called tena Forvir. This is an analog of adenosine. So when the virus wants to take up the A, it can take up this drug. This drug is going to distort the shape of the DNA molecule. Then the virus is not going to be able to replicate. Or it can take a derivative of the guanine. They can take a derivative of the cytosine or the thymidine. This slide here talks further about viruses. All we wanted to do was to introduce you to viral inhibition that is caused by some type of nucleic acid derivative. So the analog for the nucleotide is going to inhibit the virus from replicating. These are some other measures that also inhibit viruses. You probably heard of Tamiflu. So Tamiflu is a drug that prevents the virus from leaving the cell. So once the virus enters the cell, it has to make thousands and hundreds of copies of itself. Then the virus will leave the cell. In order to leave the cell, the enzyme on the surface of the virus is going to help the virus break a loose where Tamiflu inhibits that enzyme. So if the enzyme is the key that allows uh, this virus to exit the cell, Tamiflu blocks the key entry. Therefore, the virus cannot leave the cell. So that is how Tamiflu works, but that is not part of this lecture. We're just looking at nucleotides. So this is an another uh, another example of how uh, the key that allows the virus to leave the cell is going to be inhibited. The next category of drug that affects bacteria is rampamycin. Rampamycin was discovered in 1959. This drug is a mixture of five substances taken from this microorganism called amycolaptosis. Rampamycin is going to bind to the RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase makes the messenger RNA. Therefore, Rapamycin inhibits mRNA formation. Examples of rapamycin are listed in this slide below. The next type of an inhibition we will talk about is when you affect the cell membrane. So the first drug that we will discuss is gramicidin. Gramicidin is a mixture of peptides that will form a pore that penetrates the cell membrane. If you look at image B, the gramicidin is going to penetrate and create this hole in this uh, phospholipid bilayer. Once you create this hole, 
then the cell can no longer um, restrict ions and water from moving. Therefore, the cell can rupture and the organism will be destroyed. Gramicidin is active against most gram positive and some gram negative organisms. It is also used only as a topical ointment because it destroys red blood cells. It is found in polysporin. The next category of drug that affects membranes is polyenes. Polyene is an antifungal drug that attaches to the ergosterol, which is a cholesterol derivative. And when it attaches to the ergosterol, it creates a pore in the membrane of fungi. So fungi contain the ergosterol. Therefore, this drug is specific to fungi. Examples of polyenes are amphotericin B and nystatin. Humans are somewhat susceptible to polyenes because cholesterol is so similar to the ergosterol that is found in the membrane of fungi that it can affect us too. But bacteria do not have sterols. So this polyene does not affect bacteria. The next drug category that affects membranes is polymyxin. So polymyxins disrupt cytoplasmic membranes of gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas. This drug category is toxic to humans especially the kidney. So topical application must be administered. You cannot take this drug orally. Now we're going to look at how these drugs are administered. Most of these drugs are administered in combinations. So we're going to talk about combination therapy. The first cocktail of drugs is neosporin. Everybody has neosporin in their medicine cabinet. This is a topical ointment and it is a combination of several drugs or a drug cocktail. So listed below I have several drugs that are included in neosporin. You have polymyxin. Polymyxin destroys cells by inhibiting the membrane. Bacitracin. Bacitracin is going to disrupt the cell wall of certain organisms. And then neomycin. It inhibits protein synthesis. So this drug cocktail is very effective at killing microorganisms. When determining which antimicrobial agent is best, you must consider all of these listed below. The drug is readily available. The drug is inexpensive. The drug is chemically stable. The drug is easily administered. It's non-toxic and non-allergenic. It is selectively toxic against a wide range of pathogens. So all of these must be considered when determining which cell, I mean, which drug to use. Each individual drug's activity can range from a narrow spectrum to a broad spectrum. The narrow spectrum drugs only affect a few microbes. For example, if you look at penicillin in this table, it only affects gram-positive bacteria. Whereas a broad-spectrum drug affects many microbes. If you look at 
tetracycline. Tetracycline affects gram-negative bacteria and gram-positive bacteria. How is this broad, broad spectrum versus narrow spectrum relevant? So we're going to look at killing these bacteria. So killing of normal flora, bacterial flora that you naturally have is going to reduce the microbial antagonist, which can lead to a secondary infection. So some of these bacteria work against each other. And if you kill the antagonist, then the other one can mass produce. This is called a secondary infection. So a secondary infection is one that compounds a pre-existing one. This secondary infection can occur in two ways, by members of the normal microbiota or by transient pathogens. To help you understand this, I'm going to give you two examples. Here's the first example. Michelle used a drug that was in the category of macrolides. She had a streptococcus infection, which caused her to have a sore throat. The macrolides destroyed all the bacteria because it is a broad spectrum bacteria. I mean, broad spectrum drug. It killed gram negatives and it killed gram positives. It also killed the antagonist for a fungus that is called Candida abicans. Candida abicans naturally resides in the vagina. So when she took this drug for a strep throat and killed streptococcus, she also killed other bacteria that were antagonists to a fungus that lived in her vagina. The antagonist was lactobacillus. Now that she no longer has lactobacillus, Candida abicans is no longer inhibited. Candida then overpopulates the vagina. Now she has a super infection or a secondary infection. Here's the second example. The second example takes place in the large intestines. Antibiotic associated colitis. That is a disease or a infection that causes uh, pseudomembranous colitis. The antagonist to Clostridium difficile is destroyed when you take a broad spectrum antibiotic. Now that you've killed the antagonist, Clostridium difficile will flourish. As this bacteria flourishes, it causes false membranous colitis. This is swelling or inflammation of the large intestines. This is caused by a broad spectrum antibiotic. Clostridium difficile will then overpopulate the large intestines, therefore call, causing diarrhea, fever, and abdominal pain. This can also lead to a rise in resistance. So taking broad spectrum antibiotics is not a good thing. It can lead to a rise in resistance and it permits these super infections. This slide is just discussing what antibiotic biotic resistance is. So it starts with uh, 
in the agricultural industry when these farmers are trying to mass produce their product and they give the animals antibiotics. The antibiotics destroy all of the bacteria that are in their digestive tracts. It makes them more healthy. Then, because you're killing all of the bacteria, sometimes you create a superbug, a variation of the bacteria, because bacteria can get together and exchange DNA, therefore transforming one that should be able to be killed into one that is not killable using the normal antibiotics. Now that you've created a superbug or a super infection, now we can spread this bacteria. We can spread this vac bacteria when you prepare food. Then exposure. People can get sick with resistant infections from eating contaminated food. And then the farmer can spread it even further. So this is just a, a little depiction of an antibiotic resistant episode. So one way you can reduce the creation of the antibiotic resistance is to don't wash your chicken. So this is a bulletin from the CDC that talks about um, how you should not wash chicken because now this chicken, if you created a superbug on the farm and when they slaughtered the chicken, some of the guts spewed out the superbug, the super bacteria, and then now you wash the chicken, you spread this super bacteria throughout your kitchen and then now you infect everybody in the house. So the CDC recommends that you do not wash chicken. It will reduce the spread of these super infections. And like I stated earlier, the super infection, what creates this super bacteria is when you're killing the bacteria by using antibiotics, some of the bacteria lice and release their DNA. Other bacteria can pick up the DNA and it can use it. It can rearrange and recombine DNA and the recipient cell sometimes becomes resistant. And then if it becomes resistant, now you just created a super bug. One example of such a creation is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, better known as MRSA.